and welcome to another edition of Resistance TV. In the week that's seen the Israel lobby and right-wingers inside and outside the Labour Party weaponizing anti-Semitism to attack Diane Abbott, I'm delighted to welcome Rabbi David Weiss onto the show. Rabbi Weiss has come to the UK to participate in what's been titled as a Muslim and Jew tour that's been organized by longtime pro-Palestine activist Pete Gregson, who will also participate in the discussion this evening. Welcome to the UK, Rabbi Weiss. How are you, how are you feeling? I know you're a bit jet lagged, but hopefully you are uh, feeling refreshed now. Uh, with the help of the Almighty, I'm okay, thank God. And it's uh, it's really a privilege to be here, here in England and Scotland. And uh, it's uh, it's an honor and a privilege to be able to represent, uh, the tr with God help, the true Jewish uh, view in regard to the occupation. Absolutely. Well, that's great. Well, listen, we, we really do appreciate you taking the, the time to, to speak to us. And I know you're on a busy schedule, so we may be uh, a slightly truncated episode this evening because uh, I know that uh, you're speaking uh, this evening and we obviously need to make sure that you've got time to be able to get to the, to the venue. So kind of perhaps just start really by asking you to just to sort of tell us about the tour that you're undertaking. Give us a little bit of the background to it. Uh, again, first, I pray to the Almighty to bestow upon me his truth, his wisdom, that I may convey his message. Um, my name is Rabbi Israel David Weiss of Nature Karata, Jews United Against Zionism. And uh, uh, I'm here uh, with the help of the Almighty to really to educate, to clarify to the world that uh, this uh, occupation of the land Palestine, the creation of the Zionist state of Israel is totally antithetical and a, a really a contradictory to the Jewish law, to Judaism. And therefore, uh, Judaism and Zionism are two diametric opposites. Judaism is to serve God, to be, sub to be subservient to God, while this Zionist ideology, this, uh, which is a political ideology that uh, ended uh, uh, with the creation of the state of Israel, this is something which is a transformation to nationalism. It's a pure base political nationalist movement that is really unacceptable according uh, to Judaism, the religion. Yeah, I mean, what do you make of the way in which um, anti-Semitism has been weaponized to attack people who are supportive of the Palestinian struggle and critical of the apartheid state of Israel? Yeah, that's just one of the many issues that's so repugnant to us and uh, really frustrates us and hurts Jew Jewish people who uh, not so long ago we suffered that uh, we were murdered uh, and, and annihilated uh, to a large extent by uh, Hitler, his name should be obliterated, and the Nazis, and um, and uh, which was pure anti-Semitism. And then though, to go and use the suffering of Jewish people and to go and use this uh, uh, terrible tragedy uh, and which the world today uh, as at large recognizes the suffering and to use this maybe feeling of guilt amongst the world that they were silent and to take that and to, to oppress the Palestinian people and use this as a tool to occupy uh, the Palestinian people is so uh, un, uh, objectionable, so terrible, so uh, is, is such a uh, uh, colossal uh, uh, crime actually to do such a thing that it's beyond words, and that's that's uh, why I think with God's help, so it's so critical that people should understand very clearly the difference between what Judaism is and uh, what this political movement, this creation, this uh, of the state of Israel, the uh, the state of Israel itself is nothing of a. A Jewish issue that if you oppose it, you are anti-Semitic. It's a purely political, selfish, uh, flawed movement of a, a group of people, and they're using the figure backing and they're using the Judaism in order to stifle uh, uh, people who to silence people who are trying to speak up against this terrible crime, and uh, they 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 intimidate and and 
they tell people if you're going to speak up against what they're doing because they put on they they dress themselves they masquerade and they put the they dress themselves in 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 Jewish garb in uh, the holiness of Judaism they say oh if you're opposing us you are equated and you're part of Nazism you're an anti-Semite how terrible could that be we suffered we died because we're Jewish, we suffer because we, we, we serve God. And, they, and, and we know that to steal and to kill and to uh, oppress other people, to take their land, is part of the crime, is part of what we're not allowed to do as a Jew. And then they do these things to the Palestinian people. They take their land, they throw them out, and they say, oh, oh, this is, this is Judaism. And if you oppose that, then you're hating the Jew. It's just, it's just beyond words. It's, it's really totally the opposite of what a Jew is. A Jew is to be kind, not to steal, not to kill, not to oppress. We're forbidden, says thou shalt not steal in the Torah. And, this, and if you do that, you, 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 you're, you're going against what Judaism is. And they say, no, we're doing this. We're taking the land and you oppose them. You're against Judaism. Really, it's just like, it's it's weird, really. The Judaism, it's... Uh, there's more than that also. Judaism expressly tells the Jewish people that since the destruction of the temple 2,000 years ago, King Solomon's temple and so forth, we as a people, as a nation, were put into exile by God and were forbidden uh, to try to reestablish a Jewish homeland, our own uh, uh, sovereignty in any part of the world. Even one... Uh, inch, one centimeter of Jewish sovereignty is forbidden since the destruction of the temple um, as a commandment of God. And the, o- the, the only time that we will have a, a semblance of what would, would be a, a true sovereignty is when God with his compassion will reveal his glory throughout the world, the coming of the Messiah, where all humanity will recognize what God will be the will of all humanity. It will not be with force. It won't be that we're going to be taking guns and standing up against people and saying, hey, give me that piece of land. You know. So this concept will be a worldly, uh, uh, a, a total... Uh, different uh, type of a world that uh, that everybody will recognize it will be a, a, a different concept. Then we will be, as we are taught in the Torah, God will send the Messiah and we will have a sovereignty. Nothing like a state of Israel, this, this rebellion against God. And we'll, the will of the, it says all these nations will get together and, um, and uh, in brotherhood and serve God. That's when there will be a difference. Uh, yeah. But till the day comes, which is only by God that could happen, without any uh, human interference, without any, you know, th- that will happen. When that, before that happens, we are not to create a Jewish state, even if it would be the will of all humanity to give us a piece of land, even if the, Pal- let's just say it would be Palestine, the Palestinians would say, take this land and create your state. We would say as Jews, no, we're forbidden to do this. We're in exile as a dec- uh, declared by God. So what they did, when they decided to create their Zionist state of Israel, all the rabbinical authorities universally said, hey, wait a minute, what you are doing is simply a rebellion against God. And they, the, the rabbis stood up in opposition to Zionism at its birth in Europe, because the Zionists, mm-hmm. remember, Herzl and all the cohorts and all his companions, they all came as a, uh, all came from, from Europe. And they just decided yes. to locate themselves and make, create their, uh, what they wanted to create, their monster. And they decided to do that in Palestine. And the rabbis yeah. and in Europe yeah. said, "No, this is unacceptable." Of course, yeah. when they just, when they created and they got were ratified by the United Nations to make their state in Palestine, then the rabbi said, "You're now committing another crime on top of the crime of creating a, a state against the like a rebellion against God's decree of exile. Now you're killing and stealing and just." Reaching the other laws of the Torah, yeah. and we oppose you on ev- on all these facets, on all these issues. So we, as Jews, yeah. will on every uh, um, facet of Zionism, on every uh, every uh, idea of what the Zionists do, we 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 say that they are not Jewish. They're stealing our identity, the Star of David, our name Israel. What they're doing is criminal, unacceptable. It's not a, a Jewish state of Israel. It's a it's it's yeah. a, a Zionist state of rebellion against God. A Zionist entity is what I often refer to it as being. But I mean, what you've just been setting out there, Rabbi Wise, is I mean, it's it's very much contrary to the narrative that we see in this country, and I suspect in the United States of America as well. 
uh, very, con- very much contrary to the narrative uh, that's carried in the corporate media. And I've even heard like offensive remarks um, when people articulate similar views to your, to your own, Jewish people articulate similar views to your own, that, oh, you're just a self-hating Jew. How do you respond to such offensive remarks like that, Rabbi Weiss? Well, um, one of our great leaders who passed away a few years ago, I uh, used to have a mantra with a constant repeat. He would say, one and one is two. Uh, you can have all the king's horses and the king's men. You can have all the wise men of the world explain away that one and one is three. It won't change the fact that yeah. one and one is two. If it's now by us day, it's not you can you could explain with with a lot of psychology and, and, and great ideas that now it's not, but it's not. And um, the fact is, Judaism is subservience to God. The fact is that Judaism is clear, um, as all the rabbinical authorities we put we put out a book about this. The rabbis speak out, which is a hundred. Um, it's a, well around a hundred. It says one hundred thirty years records of religious Jewish opposition to Zionism. Uh, but today it's like one hundred fifty years. We have the the rabbis universally from every part of the world who explained and basically the, the issues that I said, that we are in a declaration of, I, of exile that was 2,000 years. Jews had many, went through many trials, tribulations, many suffering, much suffering, the Inquisition, uh, the Crusades, that they, people tried to force Jews uh, to, 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 uh, to convert to Christianity. If anybody, anybody who looks at the history, simply you can go to Spain, you can go to Italy, you can, you can see all the towns where they were banished. Or you go to York um, here in England, and I went there, and you see where Jews were, uh, uh, there's a um, a very famous castle in New York where Jews, it says, and there's a sign there, a big sign, that the Jews and Jews, Jewesses, it says, uh, they, they were murdered and they took their own lives before because they were afraid of being uh, murdered uh, if they're not going to convert to Christianity and they, and they were eventually burnt, the ones who remained alive. So basically, this was a sad history of Jews. And, uh, and yet, uh, the Jews had opportunity many times through 2,000 years. There was the golden age of Judaism. They could have created their own sovereignty, yet they refused to because they said God told us that he, he, we believe God is all compassionate, we don't know his ways, but we were sent into exile by God. It says clearly, that's in Hebrew, that's in our prayers we say that. Because of our sins we were sent into exile, we believe we were not on the high level that God required of us to remain in the Holy Land that we call Palestine, and we, we were sent by God, and God told us us that we are to be as a nation uh, as a, a sovereignty we have to be in a very high level of holiness to be in the holy land in this nation uh, and since we're not as all the prophets ezekiel isaiah G- all of them stated we're being sent into exile and we were put under a direct uh, c- command of god not to return and recreate a sovereignty until god will find at the time and then he will make that happen but until that time we are forbidden to do that End of sentence. This was accepted 2,000 years. We had, as I say, many golden age of Judaism, and we could have created our sovereignty, and the rabbis clearly stated, do not attempt this. Have patience. It's not acceptable to do this. And so we didn't. We didn't uh, make that through 2,000 years. Zionism came along, and let us look a picture of who Zionists were. Um, I have I carry along a picture with me where I travel a lot of times. This is uh, Ben Gurion. It says here, yeah. reading the Declaration of Independence, uh, 1948 in Independence Hall. Now, if you can see the picture, uh, and if anybody can Google it, you'll see who's on the day is who's sitting at the head. There. Not one of them is even covering the heads. I, I believe not one of them. Maybe some of them, you don't see not even. Now imagine making a Christian state or us if you would call it a Christian state, then you would have some a, a priest, some a pope, somebody over there. Yeah. there. If you're making a Muslim state, you have imams, you have um, uh, sheikhs, you have something here. They're supposedly making a Jewish state, and there were plenty of rabbis when this was done, and not one single rabbi will you find here because this was created as a a purely political uh, adventure of, of a venture to create some type of a, their own. Uh, idea of what they want, a tr- Erzatz Judaism, a transformation from sovereignty to God to nationalism. All the rabbis oppose this. And mind you, till today, you will find that we have mass demonstrations 
in the, whether it is in uh, in the streets, this is in Washington in front of the United Nations against yeah. the state of Israel, whether it is in Jerusalem, hundreds of thousands of Jews gathering. The very religious, uh, invariably, if you will go around the world, you will find the very religious communities, the more religious they are, the more they oppose this ideology of having a Jewish state or stealing the land from the Palestinians. Why? Because it's unacceptable to steal, to kill, or to have a Jewish sovereignty. It's So it's not only is it one and one is two, we're not allowed to have it, but around the world, the very religious Jews stand and are continually in opposition to the Zionist state of Israel in its entirety and all the actions yeah. that emanate from the state. So although you say that the many people say, oh, he's a self-hating Jew, it's because they have the power of the media. They have the yeah. mic in their hands. But if you if you go to England, the most religious communities in Stamford Hills in London, you will find, you won't find an Israeli flag. You go to New York, the largest concentration of religious Jews besides Jerusalem, there's not one single Israeli flag because the more religious, the more you know that Zionism and the state of Israel is unacceptable. It's the people around yeah. the world who don't know uh, the truth of Judaism that could make such a comment. People don't know that Jews are being brutally beaten. You go to Israel daily. Uh, this You see Jews are, are, are children, old men, young men, because they're simply standing up and, and denouncing the state of Israel, denouncing its existence. The, it's an, an, an intolerable and unacceptable. Old men, young children get uh, brutally beaten uh, and the world is silent. If this would happen in the UK, if it would happen anywhere else, the way the Israeli soldiers, the Israeli people treat the religious Jews, and then we never carry guns. We're simply demonstrating against the state of Israel. We never carry guns. Yeah. This is what they're doing to us. And, and the world is yeah. silent because they've accepted the narrative of Zionism. It's unbelievable. Here, I showed you this first picture here. You see a girl is in detention, arrested, simply because the Jewish youth from, 17, uh, from the age of 17 and on refused to serve in the IDF, Israeli Defense Force, which is mandatory service there. We refuse to serve in their army because it's against the Torah to do such yeah. a thing, to, stir, to yeah. serve in the Israeli army. And the world is silent. It's just unbelievable. The lack of well, knowledge part, part, of the, Jews and the people around the world. That's what we're here for. Yeah, well, absolutely. I mean, because part of the problem is that, you know, people are, are ignorant of, of, of the truth, ignorant of the facts. And I suspect many people who don't necessarily follow politics that closely would be, but I've seen the narrative in the media. Would be would be absolutely astonished to to hear you speaking, uh, uh, Rabbi Weiss. I mean, the Zionist lobby though is is very influential, isn't it? And you know they've succeeded in persuading political parties and uh, centres of academia and so on to accept the IHRA working definition of anti-Semitism. And of course that's been used to attack people like myself, who's spoken out for the Palestinian people, like Pete Gregson, who's uh, organized this tour that you are participating in. Um, are you optimistic, uh, Rabbi Weiss, about the ability of you know, sane voices like yours to actually prevail against the, the Zionist lobby? Obviously, there are major problems for the Zionist regime at the moment in Israel, as we've, as we've seen. Are you optimistic that, that things can change or, or do you think that we are in for the long haul? Well, um, we, we live our lives which in our belief. This is our the purpose of our life, that we believe that God is the uh, rules the world and he is the, the compassionate. He is totally compassionate. We don't do not understand a lot of his ways. We don't understand the tsunami. We don't understand, uh, you know, a major earthquake. And we don't understand major catastrophes like Hitler and so forth. But at the same time, we do believe that God rules the world and we ex we accept lovingly to serve God. And we believe that he is compassionate and that he at ultimately he has his purpose and that he will ultimately not let evil to prevail. We, 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 we are confident, certainly, we, we know that one day, as it says in the Torah, uh, the Torah says, do not rebel against me, you will not be successful. We know certainly that the Zionist state of Israel will one day end in its totally, that it will stop 
ex being in existence, and meaning that there will one day be a land of the Holy Land free of the occupation in its entirety. So we are certain this will come to where we pray to God every day that it should happen speedily and peacefully without any more bloodshed, without any more suffering. But we are certain it will end. And that's the way uh, uh, the Jewish people, we are taught to, this is our uh, the essence of our belief that God is compassionate. God is one. God will, um, uh, you know, God rules the world. So it will have to end. The Zionist state will end. So that's um, our issue of constantly being... Yeah. Uh, uh, in, 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 you know, in, in a happy mood <laughs> because we know it will. Yes, yes, will indeed. Well, of course, it yeah. hurts us. Yeah, of course, it hurts yeah. us. I mean, I must say, you know, we suffer and we cry and we feel with the suffering of the Palestinian people who are constantly, you know, they're being subjugated every single day now it's turning 75 years of this occupation and we, yes, and we demonstrate constantly again the world doesn't see this these, these demonstrations it's astounding that they don't see it you mentioned that the uh, uh that the zionists have a zionist lobby uh we go every single year to washington dc we have groups of people we go out there and when they make uh, um, their uh the, the zionist lobby makes their their uh their once a year, uh, they make it even if in other places, or other times of the year, in Washington, D.C., they have a, and they, they gather together uh, and they have the senators and uh, congressmen almost all come and um, and, and bow and, and give their loyalty, swear their loyalty to the Zionist uh, um, occupation. And it hurts us tremendously because they call it Judaism, they call it Jewish, um, they, and, and, and their yeah. mantra, their, their narrative is that it's the Jewish, it's the land, that it's God's will, and they're taking it because the license is, it's because God gave it to the Jews. And that hurts for us, it's frustrating beyond words because it's totally not that, and it's not one of the same. What you said, they 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 declared that if you speak up against the, the occupation, then you're labeled anti-Semitic. How? It's on the contrary. Zionism, the occupation, yeah. uh, exasper exacerbates anti-Semitism because being that people put the blame on the on the suffering of the Palestinian people on uh, uh, on the Jewish people, and saying that we want this. How, how hurtful that is and how much hate that creates. Hate yes, that indeed. unfortunately is, is, is for a reason. The hate against Jews because we're Jewish has no reason. I mean, you know, it's yeah. the, the way God, but this has, this has a reason. And therefore it's, we, we, we hurt and we want the world to know that it's it's not true. Yeah. It's a new, relatively new movement of a hundred odd years, seventy-five years. Yes, state. of course. It's unacceptable yeah, yeah, to Judaism and the Jewish people. Yes, no, absolutely. I mean, Shulamit, Shulamit uh, Aloni. I'm sure you're familiar with the quote um, from uh, just uh, 21 years ago. I think uh, in an interview, former Israeli uh, cabinet minister said that anti-Semitism is a trick that we always use whenever Israel is criticized. So it's an easy way to uh, divert attention, as it were. And, you know, Pete, you've been viciously smeared by the uh, Zionist uh, lobby, uh, but you've you've kept going. You've you've not been cowed. You've uh, organized this uh, tour. I mean, where do you get the, uh, the tenacity, the energy, the indefatigability, if I can use that term, to, to keep going, Pete? Well, I have to say, um, a couple of years ago, I, I wasn't in this state. Um, three years ago, just before COVID, I think, um, The Guardian ran an article, and it was critical of me. And uh, it, I got quite depressed. That got tweeted all over the place. And I, I wrote to The Guardian and complained. Um, but they, they just ignored me. And uh, my kids were saying, oh, Dad, why do you hate Jews? And at this point, I just thought, this is too much. You know, even my children are swallowing this. And I stopped at the beginning of COVID. I just stopped completely. I said, I'm not going to campaign anymore about anything. And luckily it coincided with COVID. But, you know, I went into a sort of hermit shell. I was still working. I've got a job at the NHS. But after a couple of years, things were coming out of COVID. And I decided, oh, well, I'll just kind of log into a Zoom call, which is about Palestine. Uh, and this was um, with the PSC or something. The PSC had, had kicked me out because I'd... Um, PSC being Palestine Solidarity. Solidarity campaign, yeah. campaign because I'd suggested yeah. that there was a, a lot of Jews in the UK that supported uh, Israel and that a lot of them were, were quite influential. 
And the PSC care more about the feelings of Zionists in the UK than they care about the Palestinians back in Palestine. Yeah. Anyway, so I, I tried to click into this call and I was kicked out. And I was like, this is insane. You know, this is two years later and I'm still being victimized. And I, at that point, I just thought, well, what am I going to do? And there was a lot of people like myself. You know, there was about 70 or 80 of us that were in a group called Labour Against Zionist Islamophobic Racism. And I got in touch with them and, and we came together and set ourselves up as the campaign against bogus anti-Semitism. And, and it was really just to say, you know, look, we're here. This is wrong. We haven't done anything wrong. We're not ashamed. And a lot of it hung around this kind of rogues gallery page where people who had been targeted for bogus anti-Semitism told their stories and tried to set the record straight and said, you know, this is, this is madness. I've never criticized Jews. It's only Israel. And out of that yes. grew a kind of energy of people who said, you know, we, we had meetings and we, uh, I was also trying to get Edinburgh twinned with Gaza. <laughs> this was something that got me going. Yes. And that's kind of how I met Rabbi Weiss, because I went to New York. I was invited because of the Gaza twinning. Nobody wants to twin with Gaza in the UK apart from, well, um, Balfour came from Edinburgh. So I went to Edinburgh Council and said, look, we've got to do something to make up. And surprisingly, yeah. they were quite receptive after three years of lobbying and thousands of letters yeah. from Muslims. And now this is what's interesting is the Muslim community in the UK number four million people, and they're getting more and more confident. You know, we have a, a Muslim first minister in Scotland, Hamza Yusuf. We have Anna Sawa, the leader of the Labour Party in Scotland, also Muslim. All over the UK, Muslims are becoming more interested in politics and they are generally supportive of Palestine because of Al-Aqsa. Yes. So when I went yes, to New yes. York and I met Rabbi Weiss and he said, look, I want to come. I said, do you want to come to the UK? And he said, yeah, I want to come to the UK, but I want to, I would like to address Muslims. I would like to explain to Muslims that, that what you see in Israel isn't Judaism. Uh, and he was very yeah. concerned that people were getting the wrong impression. So I, uh, I, I organized this tour so that Rabbi Weiss could particularly speak to Muslims. So I've booked venues in Muslim areas, and I think we have quite a good showing. Um, good. And, and also I've got Azam Tamimi as the sort of Muslim side, putting another perspective on, on yes. yeah. you know, yeah. because for a thousand years under uh, Ottoman and Islam, it was perfect peace. Um, you yes, know, indeed. Jews, indeed. Supported. Yeah. And even now in places like Iran and Morocco, many Jewish communities, um, very happy, utterly tolerated, yeah. supported, no problems, live yeah. happily. Um, and people don't understand this. And they also certainly were shocked. You know, I've been around, I put about 20,000 flyers out around the UK in the last year. And a lot of Muslims are like, oh, this, this rabbi, he, he, he's for Israel, isn't he? And I said, no, he's not. And they were like, what you know this is yeah, novel yeah. this is novel what rabbi vice is saying is is novel but they understand it because of course um the quran has all the same prophets as the torah yeah it even awesome. has Christ as, as isus so they recognize all the religions the monotheist religions that came before them and the, there is a lot more there's probably more connections between judaism and islam than there is with Christianity. I mean, Christianity is the odd one out because we have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and you know, all this sort of wine and body of Christ, and you know, lots of stuff, which is very much about trying to personify God. Whereas Islam yeah. and Judaism doesn't get into any of that. You know, for them, yeah. it's a much more pure, reflective process. And so there's connections which I think are interesting to Muslims because they show uh, a continuity. But in a way, this has actually been ruined by Christians. I mean, it was the Christians that that gave that gave um, that gave uh, Palestine to the Zionists. This was a Christian evangelical movement. Um, and, Although and I've seen footage, uh, Pete, I'm sure you have too, of uh, the Zionist goons, uh, you know, security personnel attacking uh, Christian Palestinians. Uh, only, well, I mean, it's a regular occurrence, but yes, yes. I mean, now they do. Yes, I mean, the whole thing's. Uh, I mean, only just yesterday was that Macron was complaining because the French church was being occupied by Israeli yeah. soldiers. You know, this is, yeah. uh, it's, it's, things are getting out of hand because what started yes. as a sort of Zionist settlement has, it's become what they call religious Zionism. And I, I'm curious to know what Rabbi Weiss makes of religious Zionism because that's in opposition 
yeah. to what you're saying. Indeed. Um, Perhaps you for Rabbi Weiss, you could uh, give your thoughts on that point. Yeah, with help of the money, first of all, there's two uh, 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 distinctly uh, different parts of this religious uh, Zionism. There's the uh, in the, the support of the Zionist state of Israel, which is in numbers, ironically, much, much larger of non-Jews than Jews who are in support, the evangelistic Christians. And that is why Zionism, at its inception, the beginning, they decided they had a meetings in the Switzerland and um, they and, and Basel, Switzerland. They had a meeting and they decided that they instead of uh, uh, making this new state of Israel that they wanted to create this new Zionist entity, they wanted to do something which was practical. These were non-religious people. They wanted something that's practical and a lush land, something that could be developed in those days. And they, in, in the it was, it was the time of uh, uh, that. They were looking how to develop a land that would be uh, uh, leash uh, that would leave, uh, that would was have good to be productive, and they decided to make it in uh, uh, in, in Patagonia uh, or yes or in in, in in Uganda. They had different concepts, but then they said no. Yes, we I have to it. turn to Palestine because in that way we can use the narrative because you need a massive amount yeah. of support from the nations. And if we make it in Palestine, then we could turn to the evangelistic Christians and we say, hey, you know, they wave the Bible and they say, hey, God gave the Jews the land and you saw in part of the narrative of Christianity say so you should yeah. support us. And the evangelistic Christians have these tremendously large movements in numbers, like I say, it totally out overshadows the Jewish uh, support of the, Jew of the state of Israel. And they go and they say, yes, it belongs to the Jews, and they totally ignore what they're doing is criminal. They're occupying another people and they support yeah. and they and they they just repeat what the Zionists say that the, the uh, that the Palestinians um hate the Jews because they're Jewish now we have I always again I'm constantly showing pictures we used to live together in Palestine Jew and Muslim uh, and peace and, yeah. and, and, yeah. and and this was all over the uh in Arab and Muslim lands because as people were saying we uh we happen to share a very close we believe in one God and we always live without any human rights protection groups we lived in harmony we were protected and uh, supported, and we flourished in Arab and Muslim lands when we were being thrown out of the of, banished from Europe. We were, we were able, we totally flourished and put out the greatest rabbis in Arab and Muslim lands. And we, we have to show gratitude for that. And so they and they went away, they created a narrative, the Zionists. They say to the world, the Palestinians are villains, they hate the Jews, the Muslims hate the Jews, and the world bought the Western world bought into this, how how repugnant, how it hurts us to hear this when it was the Muslims and Arabs who took us in and protected us for 2,000 years. And yet their narrative is that this is a religious war between Muslims and Jews. That is unacceptable. And, and, and you know, I show a picture, and this is such an, this was in, 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 uh, in the time of um, the PLO, uh, when they, they, it was the war in, the, in Lebanon, and uh, the, and there was a Jewish synagogues in Lebanon because Jews lived, as I say, in Arab lands, and the Zionists went, and um, um, and they, you know, of course, they described as the PLO and so forth, the Palestinian people as hating the Jews, and here you see when when there was the fight in Lebanon, and um, and uh, many people were killed between the Christians and the Muslims over there. Now there was a Jewish synagogue, and the, uh, President uh, of the PLO, uh, President Arafat of the PLO, Yasser Arafat, sent his troops to stand guard over the Jewish synagogue. Nobody talks about this to protect the Jewish synagogue yeah. in Lebanon. It's just yeah. an interesting picture. Nobody talks yeah. about this part of the history. It just goes past yeah. that. Now, that's the part of Christian, of the evangelistic support of Zionism, the religious support, that their support is massive. And if you speak against the state of Israel, it's the evangelistic Christians in the United States who stand with a stick against anybody who stands up against them and declares you anti-Semitic. Oh, yeah. Now, the Jewish... Yeah, Jesus, uh, seen that, yeah. Now, the, just one more. The Jewish is a, a religious um, a support of Zionism is not the root Jewish religious communities. The very religious communities who know their religion are anti-Zionist. It's the settlers that you always see in the media. These come from mostly non-religious families or marginally 
<coughs> religious, and they they these are uh, uh, idealists. They go to university and they say, "Oh, they hear from the Zionist propaganda that this is our belief," to, to, and not knowing the basically ignorant of the Jewish laws. And these guys who come from these uh, marginally uh, Jewish families, they come along and they made these settlements and they're agitating and they're always in the news. So when you see these settlers, you think, oh, it's a real, it's the religious Jews that have a war with the Palestinians. No, it's these settlers who are coming from the uh, uh, fringe of Judaism. They're coming from the, uh, yeah. from the Zionist uh, uh, groups. They're the ones who are giving it the face of religion. It's not, the, and, and the, the government today, yeah. this, this, that they call extreme government, although by us, every Israeli government is, is, is it's, criminal yeah. in its existence, but it's, yeah. it's not religion and it's not the religious communities. Our rabbis from day one, I carry along as Rabbi Dushinsky of blessed memory in the United Nations dec um, documents even says 1947, the state was ratified in 1948 by the United Nations. He declared that you have yeah. a picture of how they're sitting in front of the United Nations um, in, in, in the delegation that came to, the, uh, to Palestine to discuss if they should create a Jewish state. And he declared, we furthermore wish to express here, you see, this is the, where they're sitting there by with the with the people of the United Nations. He said, "We furthermore wish to declare our express uh, uh, de and our definite opposition to a Jewish state in any part of Palestine." This was the, yeah. the, the stated by the chief rabbi of the Jewish religious community, and this is till today the stance and the position held by religious Jews in Palestine. You should know this week, Jews were arrested. In the middle of the night, they broke into the Jewish communities because this is, as you know, is going to be a, the Hebrew date. Hey, ear is the day oh, that we mourn and we fast and mourn in the Jewish communities, the day of the ratification, the creation of the state of Israel. And they go, the, Israel goes around around the whole um, of their occupation in the state of Israel and they put the Israeli flags in the very religious communities. They rip it down in our communities. They refuse to have it in their streets. So the, what happens is um, the Zionists went in Beit Be Be Shemesh. That's not even in Jerusalem, where the very the heart of the religious community is. They went and they arrested people in the middle of the night. They broke into them in the middle of the Sabbath, mind you. We're not allowed to drive in cars. We're not allowed to, in the middle of the Sabbath. In the middle of the night, they went and they broke into Jewish homes. They arrested people, and they um, and and I believe they're still under arrest. They are still under arrest in 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 occupied Palestine. And the world decided, why did they arrest them? Simply because they said, oh, we, we, we suspect that you're part of the people who ripped down the flags. Throughout the whole area, this, they, 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 the children go and they refuse. They stand there and demonstrate. They refuse to have the Israeli flags in front of the houses. It's, it's an affront to, our, to what we are. To our uh, to our yeah. serving God, and this is what they what, what is happening. They continue again. If it would happen in the U.S., it would happen in U.K. If it would happen in Iran, imagine if it yeah. would happen in any land. Then there would be if the Netanyahu would be uh, would jumping around um, on, 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 from plane to oh, plane, demanding restitution money because of course he wants the money, demanding restitution yeah. for for what's being done to the Jews as as is their 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 really uh, deplorable way of existing. But this is happening and the world is silent. Yeah. Well, listen, uh, it sounds like a really fascinating uh, tour and you are an incredibly engaging uh, speaker, Rabbi Weiss. I'm sure people will be uh, very fulfilled to, to hear you speak on your tour. Just uh, finally, then, because I know, you, as I said at the start, you're on a very tight uh, schedule. Just finally, uh, could you give us a brief, either Pete or yourself, Rabbi Weiss, uh, where... where you will be speaking where the tour will be going and when it will be finishing. Well, I'll leave that for the people. <laughs> oh my gosh, you caught me in a strange place. All oh, right, I've caught, caught you on the hot there, but yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I'll just uh, give you one minute. Well, let me, while he's looking for the, uh, the information, well, you see, he's, he's not that prepared for this because he really knows uh, ideally that what we're going to be doing is going to be invited. Uh, to Parliament, and that we're going to be um, declaring to the world 
that the uh, that uh, that the rulership in, in in England is going to stand up and recognize that the occupation is unacceptable. That's what he's hoping that we're going to have to change yeah. the tour plan well, into a major uh, absolutely yeah. Uh, yeah. official yeah. Uh, exception, and, uh, uh, and it's going to be an official accepting that the fact is that uh, that. It's unacceptable to occupy Palestine, and that we should have, with God's help, to celebrate it. That I should be here to celebrate a free Palestine. Yeah, yeah this is what he's saying. But, I, think, uh, I think Pete's got the details. But what we're hoping out of this that um, a lot of, of people who come to the talks uh, begin to understand um, that that there is uh, lots of, of tr truly religious Jews that reject Zionism, and one would hope. Uh, I think particularly amongst Muslims in the next few years, I think we'll see more yeah. and more confidence. At the moment, with the loss of Corbyn and the loss of um, all that he represented in terms of hope for Palestine, and with Keir Starmer, you know, things have taken a big backward step. But I think so. the kind of genie's out of the bottle now. You know, people know, even the press oh, yeah. know, that, that yeah. Corbyn was no anti-Semite. And they can see, uh, I, I think we... we no one's going to turn the clock back, you know, to how it no. was on the Tony Blair. Pete, I think, I think they knew that from the outset. It was, ne it was never about anti-Semitism. It was about protecting the Israeli state, and it was about destroying the prospects of an anti-imperialist, pro-Palestinian prime minister coming to power. That's what it was all about. They, you know, it was against socialism. It was against anti-imperialism. It was against pro-Palestinian. It was against, uh, you know, efforts to secure Palestinian... Liberation. It was never about anti-Semitism because the people that were targeted were universally anti-racists, anti-racist, <laughs> anti-imperialist, socialists. Yeah. Exactly. Whether well, there are people yeah. like Ken Livingstone, whose record is unimpeachable, he advanced the cause of anti-racism probably more than anybody else in public office when he was the leader of the Greater London Council and the Mayor of, of London. And he's now as a, seen as a pariah, you know, as an anti-Semite. It's, 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 I think it's absolutely despicable what's, what's happened. Interesting but... though is, is you have two medias. You know, you have the BBC, you have the Zionist media, you have Parliament, and you have the people. And I spend all my time, years and years, speaking to people, um, not just protesters, but generally amongst the population at large, there is a sympathy for Palestine. Oh yes, no, I think that's true. Palestine look at the World Cup. Look at the, the World Cup, Cup Pete. Look at the World Cup. The, the support for Palestine yeah. was yeah. ubiquitous. It was the the it was universal, and the Palestinian flag was ubiquitous across the whole tournament. It was it was amazing. So that so, was great. So but Pete, is... I mean, as I say, just a conclusion. Have you have you got? Uh, is there anywhere where people can go? Any any websites or a, or a social media <laughs> a link that people can go to okay. to find out well, details of where you're going to be? There's 15 cities, Edinburgh, Newcastle, Bradford, Leeds, London, Cardiff, Bristol, Liverpool, Leicester, Coventry, Birmingham, Derby, Manchester, Sheffield and Glasgow. And if That's people want to book seats uh, or get the details of the venues, if they go to www.onepalestine.land and that's the website, onepalestine.land. Well, listen, Pete, what, what we'll do then, Pete, when we, um, uh, when we put this out after... Obviously, it's going out live, but after um, what we do is we then circulate it on social media and so on. We, we can put the link uh, uh, on the social media uh, uh, post so that people can be able I, to you know, book, book their places that way. I should say that the UK lawyers for Israel and the Friends of Israel hate what we're doing. And no, they, tried to, to, uh, yeah, they yeah. tried to stop the rabbi getting into this country. And I'm so pleased yeah, this I'm morning we stopped through customs. Yeah. 180 people wrote letters to Suella Bravman saying, don't keep yeah. the rabbi out. He's a man of peace. He comes to help relationships yeah. between um, Jews and Arabs, not sour yeah. them. This is, what we say. this is what UK Lawyers for yeah. Israel is saying. Oh, yeah, we don't want any trouble. Um, no. But I think with the with, on the back of, of what's been happening in Al-Aqsa and the footage of yeah. you know Zionist Israeli soldiers beating worshippers. I think it was actually becoming quite hard for them to argue that there was anything no, dangerous. But there's no, still no, problems absolutely. with venues because they're threatening venues and a couple of venues. Oh I've passed. seen that. I've seen yeah well I've seen that. But I mean and we've had to I, try I've been and victim it. of that. I, I I've been victim of that. But I mean what we've done then uh, in so, when well, hopefully the weather's good enough is we've done a, a, an outdoor meeting. Yeah. You know we've we've not been 
we've not been defeated by them. So, yeah, well, yeah, well yeah. best of luck anyway. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much indeed, uh, Rabbi Weiss, for taking the, the time to thank speak you. to us this evening. It's been really fascinating, and I'm, I'm sure that people who go to these uh, meetings will be really enlightened and, and will find it, you know, an enjoyable experience, if that's uh, the right way to describe it. But I've certainly enjoyed listening to you uh, this evening. So thank you again. And thank you, Pete, no, for, for coming on. And thank you yeah. for organising it as well. Yeah, thank sorry, you. Sorry, sorry, Rabbi Weiss. We, yeah, the Almighty should hope that we should have, um, that it's sooner nowadays we should be able to celebrate uh, a free Palestine and we could again serve God in harmony and in peace and ultimately Absolutely. the revelation of God with all humanity will live in peace and harmony and uh, joy. We should be able to serve God with peace on the yeah. world. God should help. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. I think we could all en endorse that sentiment. So thank you very much indeed. Thank you everybody for watching. We'll be back next week at the same time on Wednesday, 7 p.m. And until then, have a good evening and good night.